don't strike too soon because if you do, you will lose the opportunity to book a call. You will lose the opportunity to sell a deal. This also works very, very well in a sales conversation. This is uh, the DM response coaching secrets. And there's actually one main secret that I just wanted to cover. I was going to go really in depth with like five or eight different secrets, but I thought, you know what? Let's just start with one that's probably the most powerful out of all of them. This is the most potent DM uh, technique of all times. Do you guys know what the secret is? Well, looking at this snake, right? If this photographer is your prospect and you're the snake, what's happened here is this particular prospect gets pretty close, gets within range of the snake, and the snake lunges at the prospect too soon and he doesn't bite into the prospect. And so the secret here is don't strike too soon. Okay. Now, what I mean by that, I'm going to share a quick story here about two fishermen. Once upon a time, there was two fisher people. There was a really professional fisherman, and then there was this amateur fisherman. And they both went down to this, this river, and they went fishing in the river. And uh, the amateur fisherman had just got out of the fishing store. He bought all this gear and asked all these questions, got the right gear, and he goes down to the, the river, and he's excited. And the pro fisherman just rocks up with this little backpack pretty archaic his fishing rods kind of busted up and so they go to two different places in the river the pro fisherman pulls out his, out his backpack some some gear puts his line together and casts into the water and within about two minutes hooks his first fish and starts reeling it in the amateur fisherman's watching this guy and says oh man like i could do this too goes to another place a little bit up the river similar spot and he puts his bait together and he casts in and he gets a nibble on his line and he strikes and he misses and he puts it back in the water and gets another nibble and he strikes and he misses. And he looks down at this pro fisherman and he sees this pro fisherman just knocking fish out of the water. It's caught like five, eight, 10 fish, right? In, 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 the, in the span of a couple of hours. Pro fisherman kind of gets tired, caught enough fish, puts his stuff together and he's walking back out of the river and sees this amateur fisherman struggling. And he goes down to this guy and he says, hey man, it looks like, uh, how's, how's the fishing? How's it going? And the amateur guy goes, well, uh, it's, I, I haven't caught anything, but I'm getting bites. And so the pro fisherman says, oh, should we talk about that? And the amateur guy says, yeah, like I, I'd love some technique because I saw you over there just slaying fish. Maybe it's the spot in the river. And the pro fisherman says something completely profound to this amateur fisherman. The pro fisherman says, well, think about this for a second. If your bait is the food for the fish and you cast it into, say, like an area where a lot of fish can hang out, the fish that really wants that food is going to go up and it's going to test grabbing onto that food, but it's not going to grab onto that food. Because if you were going to get some food and you had a thousand people in front of you, say like at a wedding, you're going up to get some cake at the cake table. You're not going to just start eating that cake right there at the table. You're probably going to go up, make sure the cake is something you can eat, put a piece on your plate and then take it back to your table or take it back into a secluded area where you can eat that, that wedding cake and, and enjoy it. The fish are the same way. He said, when you cast your line into the, the water, there's gonna be a lot of different fish that want that food. Oops. And so um, the, the fish is gonna come up and try to hit that food and test it. And then if it likes what it sees, it's gonna come back, grab that food, and then take it into its little hole where it can eat the food. And the amateur fisherman is like completely mind blown. He's like, this totally makes sense to me. I don't understand, like that's really, really valuable. So the pro fisherman says this, he says, the next time you cast in, you're going to get that nibble, don't strike. Instead, strip line, take line off your, off your rod so that the fish can come back, grab the food, take it down into its little corner, and then start chowing the meal. Sure enough, the amateur fisherman casts into the water, the nibble comes, he's really apprehensive, he's like, should I strike? And the pro's like, no, 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 strip line, let line out. So he lets some line out of the, 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 the line. And the fish came back, sure enough, bit the food, strikes it, starts running into the hole, and the pro says, strike. And the amateur man, a fisher guy, strikes the fish, catches him, reels him in, and boom, the amateur caught a fish. So what is the moral of this entire story? Strip lining is one of the most potent sales techniques of all times. Not only does it work in fishing, but it absolutely works in the DMs. 100 out of 100 times, I promise. Let's get into some examples so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. This is the very first example I'm going to share, okay? Now, all these examples that I'm about to show you, booked calls immediately, same day, okay?
Okay, so this is a technique. If you are looking to book calls or do anything in the DMs, this is powerful. So Michelle says here, well, this is something we're currently not doing well. So let me give you some context. The conversation, we sent our first message out to Michelle. And then she said, um, yeah, I'm open to connecting. So we reported, we connected, right? We got the engagement. And then we asked one of our little first transition calls in the conversation and said, hey, how are you finding new clients? And she comes back with this. She says, well, this is something we're currently not doing well. We've been mostly re reaching out to former clients and people who we have pre-existing relationships with, but we aren't reaching out to new prospects. We want to work with someone who can organically find the right candidates for us to speak with. Now, most people, amateur salespeople, amateur DMers, what is the response typically going to be in this case? Most people would just jump down this person's throat saying, oh my God, we can totally help you with this. We can totally clear this up. We can sort you out. You know, like think if you're a flow chat for a second and you're selling to Michelle here, we could do all that. And, and, and most people will come over the top and say, oh, well, we should definitely talk because I can actually help you solve that problem, right? And so anytime somebody comes at you saying, I need some help with this, whenever they're vulnerable, whenever they let down their guard just a little bit, the amateur person will try to jump over that fence and go down their throat and try to say, hey, let me help you solve your problem. Well, what the pro salesperson will do is strip line. They'll say something different. They will not jump over that fence. And when this happens, what happens is, look, check this out. She sends the first message. Here, we come back and we strip the line. We say, hmm, interesting. I didn't see that one coming. From your social appearance, it doesn't look like you struggle with that. What have you tried to do to fix this? Have you already tried working with other people? Now, if you get that message versus, oh my God, like I could totally help you with this. Let's book a call and go down the path. Your walls as a prospect jump back up and you're like, no, 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 no. This person's just trying to sell something to me. It feels salesy. doesn't feel good. You don't want to do it. Instead, be the pro. Strip the line a little bit. Ask them one more layer deep of a question and actually push it away. See how I push this away? It's like, interesting. I didn't see that one coming. Like, it doesn't appear that you struggle with that. Like, what have you tried to do in the past? And all I'm doing is I'm diagnosing, I'm being the doctor, I'm being the psychiatrist here, and I'm asking a one more layer deep question because what happens is this. She comes back and she just verbally shares all of this stuff that's totally vulnerable. We're very new as a company, still in our first eight months of being in business. We weren't really needing new clients at first, but now we definitely are. We haven't used any services solutions yet, but I've started to meet people with with companies that can help. Now the window is open because I've positioned myself as a consultant or as a true expert and I haven't jumped down her throat. I haven't tried to strike as that snake and hit that prospect off my first message. Instead, I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna say this. Sounds like timing's perfect. Makes sense for you to evaluate what we've built. Our tech's transforming the way people DM for business. Let's get you booked on my team so you can check it out right now, no obligation. And then I drop the link. What happened? She booked a call within like three minutes, okay? And then, of course, the last line is, let me know when you book yes, because we always want to keep engagement. She booked a call and she came back. She's like, Chris, I booked a call uh, on Thursday. Perfect. So my point in this, here's one example where it worked beautifully. Most people, if they jump down where it says strip lining and they tried to go down the throat of this prospect, they wouldn't book the call. The prospect would be like, oh, no, not interested. You're just trying to sell me in the DMs. I'm not interested, right? So next example here. I think is a good one. So, so again, this guy's an individual consultant. Uh, he does done for you work. We had a little bit of a chat before, and we said some some sort of a transitional question is like, well, like how's your business going? What are you up to these days? And and we started talking about how many clients he had, and he said, well, I have two at this time, trying to get three more by the end of the month. Now, if you're flow chat and you're an amateur. And you're going to go down and you're going to say, oh my God, well, my system can help you get three more clients. Most people would go down the path of saying, I can get you three more clients. So whenever your prospect throws you this first like softball, like if they're pitching you a softball, don't hit it out of the park. Even though you know that you can, do not do that. Instead, catch that softball and toss it back to them with another question. Great challenge. Do you have a stack pipeline to find your next three? How are you finding opportunities? Right? And then what happened is this guy comes back and he says something else and, and it dropped that window open for us and we booked the call right away. Very, very straightforward, okay? Example number three, we invited this prospect to join our group. 
And she goes, no, 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 not into groups. I've been into too many of them. We said, no pressure on the group. They can be overwhelming. Let's connect a bit in chat. I'm inspired that you're a motivational speaker. Takes courage to do that. How do you find the right events to speak at? And she comes back and says, well, that's one of the things I struggle with. I have a particular niche. Now, most amateurs would jump down our throat saying, I can help you solve that struggle. And this is going to happen to you guys over and over and over. When you tee this up right, it'll happen every single time. Do not jump down their throat at their first message that they send to you asking or telling you they have a struggle, rather strip line. Hmm, that seems surprising because I assume speakers like you would be in demand in your niche. What have you tried to do to book stages in the past? And next thing you know, she verbally throws a whole big response out at us. And she goes, but I'm still really struggling with this. Oh, shoot. Well, we have a tech that might be able to help. It'd be worth you looking at it. Let's book a call. Here's my link. Book the call. Okay. So with that said, what's the secret? Don't strike too soon because if you do, you will lose the opportunity to book a call. You will lose the opportunity to sell a deal. This also works very, very well in a sales conversation. When you're speaking with somebody on the phone or over Zoom and they give you an easy layup to, to like smash the ball down the hoop, don't do it. Rather stop, pass the ball back to them with a simple question and go one layer deeper. If you do this, I promise you guys will win. Thank <music> you.